right so after is running so this is being recorded well uh, as you can see i'm working from home today um so this is not a lecture hall but still um yeah, i've got the facilities to do this so um so we, we are still um discussing water power uh we just did bioenergy mm -hmm. so in water power we did uh, <clears throat> estuaries and uh, water turbines uh, that uh, are installed uh, underwater etc so uh, we will uh, move on today to the classical ones uh, like uh, okay um, <clears throat> we did tidal energy but we'll mo move on to hydropower today um, so in hydropower we have the conventional uh, hydropower stations. So we have runoff river stations and uh, pumped storage. So <clears throat> when you talk about history, in um, 1900, there were over half a million water mills in Europe. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Water mills uh, uh, were the conventional uh, hydropower uh, rotary machine at the time. So uh, of a water mill, the average power generated can be about five kilowatts, uh, seven horsepower. So seven horsepower is equivalent to um, the power of a motorcycle these days, um, a big one. Um, and uh, the second uh, commercial power plant in the world was uh, was at Niagara Falls. Uh, it was built in uh, 1890 to 1895 and expanded. It expanded until 1920s. That means uh, the uh, number of turbines increased. And uh, the current status of the UK is uh, hydropower is is only about one percent of the national generation. But globally, 20 percent of the electricity. Uh, is generated using uh, hydropower, uh, but that is uh, about 2% of the total energy um, demand. And uh, at the moment, China is the, um, is the highest user of hydropower, then Brazil, then Canada. Now, when you look at this graph, um, this chart, you can see that uh, it's, roughly proportional to uh, the land area as well. So you need to have, um, you need to have big rivers, big, um, large falls of water. Uh, I'm not talking about water falls. So I, what I'm talking about is elevations. Um, hydropower depends on MGH or the potential energy. That means when you have land, when you have high ground, when you have water at high ground, uh, you can run that water down and generate energy from the potential energy. Convert the potential energy into electrical energy. And uh, the fourth largest is the United States, then Russia, uh, Norway, um, India, Venezuela, uh, Sweden, and Japan. So, um, but Norway is uh, the uh, they, they use the hydropower the best, uh, uh, even though they are, uh, the size of the country and, and the population is less, they meet more stuff, their yeah, electricity demand using hydropower. So actually China started late uh, using uh, hydropower. Russia started late using hydropower. Uh, so the conventional uh, countries were like uh, Brazil, Canada, United States, and so on. So um, a conventional hydropower plant is something like this. So you have a river. A river runs through a, usually uh, runs through a, a valley. Then what you do is you uh, put up a dam across the valley so that you can uh, have a head. Head, head is that the, 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 the height. 
Okay, so that is that is where potential energy is generated. Okay, uh, and uh, then uh, you increase the amount of water that you have uh, having a, having a large reservoir, and uh, <clears throat> water is released through a, a turbine. Um, and uh, we will talk about these turbines a little bit as well. Then once the then the turbine runs, the generator generator converts the <clears throat> kinetic energy into well, turbine converts the potential energy into kinetic energy, and the generator converts kinetic energy into uh, electrical energy. So um, the potential energy is mgh. The potential potential energy is uh, uh, so m is uh, rho v. Rho v is the volume, and uh, p is power. Power is uh, rho q g h. Q is the uh, again volume flow rate. So uh, and uh, effective power is uh, eta times rho times q times gh. Uh, eta is the efficiency, rho is the density, q is the volume flow rate, g is the acceleration due to gravity, h is the effective height. And uh, you start sizing the um, hydropower plants or hydropower station. So, uh, so you, you, if you size it for the peak flow, it will uh, operate below optimum efficiency most of the time. So, large generation capacity is needed for maximum power. So, you need to um, make compromises to uh, <laughs> meet the capacity factor, uh, meaning uh, if you size it for the peak power, it will be really large. And then it will be running at uh, low capacity. Uh, an example is like, OK, if you uh, if, if you have a highest if you have highest demand of, say, one gigawatt and uh, you have you have you size it for one gigawatt, but your average demand is like uh, 500 megawatt, so you will be running at 500 megawatt most of the time, and and, and uh, that is half the capacity. So capacity factor is annual, annual electricity generated uh, divided by electricity generated if running at rated capacity for whole year. So this again uh, is uh, suppose take my earlier example. So your the capacity, the size of your um, installation is one gigawatt. So one gigawatt times uh, one year is the capacity. And uh, if your average demand is half a megawatt, half a gigawatt, that is 500 megawatts. So your annual usage is 500 megawatts times one year. So 500 megawatts times one year divided by five, one gigawatt times one year is 50%. Okay, we'll talk about uh, turbine types. There is a uh, one uh, turbine called uh, the Kaplan turbine. So it, it, it's an axial flow turbine. Uh, it is half reaction, half uh, um, half impulse. Okay. So we'll, we'll talk about the impulse turbine first, actually. Um, impulse turbine is something uh, like a Pelton wheel. A Pelton, in a Pelton wheel, what you have, now uh, these are like cups. Yeah, they're like cups, so the the sense of rotation is in, in, in that direction. Then you have a jet, a peripheral jet of water pushing this uh, uh, these uh, 
these cups. So you usually uh, they are the, the water is injected at the center of the cup, and the water is uh, the the water will uh, <coughs> create the impulse in the direction of rotation, and then uh, it will the, the water will leave the cup in the in the reverse direction. So uh, you can imagine this uh, equating this to a spoon. Right? So, so if you if you put, if you have an injection, if you have a jet of water aimed at a spoon like that, so water will come come and hit the spoon, and and the water will be water will leave the spoon on either side, and the spool spoon will move, move forward. So these these are like a series of uh, spoons uh, radially positioned uh, in it. So this is called a Felton wheel. So this is a impulse turbine. Now, so what the use of an impulse turbine is, is when you have high kinetic energy in the sense, if you have a high velocity. So when you, you have a high velocity, when you have high, uh, a very tall height, but um, when you have a very tall height, you don't have um, much uh, flow rate. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I get that. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Um, so, uh, So, so we were we were talking about um, uh, the impulse uh, impulse turbine or a Pelton wheel. So, in an impulse turbine, what you have what you have is a, a high velocity water jet uh, with a low flow rate. So, the typical name given for a, for a device like this is, is a Pelton wheel. And then we will go back to uh, the previous one. Uh, this is this is a Francis turbine. So in a Francis turbine, what you have is a is a large area covered by the wheel. Uh, it, it's a large area. It's it's normally a, a axial flow and uh, it's it's axial flow as well as uh, in Fran usual Francis turbines uh, they are vertical axis vertical axis. Okay, uh, Pelton wheel can be most of the time. Um, it, it can be horizontal axis like that. So the axis is in that direction, horizontal axis. But from, sorry, uh, sorry, Kaplan turbines. Kaplan turbines are, are, are they are they are reaction turbines. They are axial axial flow. Reaction turbine means you um, <clears throat> generate power using the flow flow, mostly the flow. So you have a high flow but a low head. High flow, low head, and uh, on the other hand, in uh, in a Pelton Pelton wheel, you have a high flow, high speed, low flow rate. So high speed, low flow rate. So you use a Pelton turbine, and then. This is this is a, a Francis turbine, which is a mixed flow. So this is half reaction, half impulse. Half reaction, half impulse is a Francis turbine, and a Pelton wheel is a full reaction turbine, and a Kaplan turbine is a full uh, full reaction turbine. Uh, so a Pelton wheel is a full impulse turbine. A Kaplan turbine is a full reaction turbine. <clears throat> so if you uh, do the subject uh, thermofluid systems, you will uh, get to know um, how uh, the, the mechanics of these uh, veins, vein diagrams, etc. You can uh, you can uh, draw these. Um, and uh, if you uh, look at the drop height versus uh, flow rate, so your Pelton wheel. Uh, is at the top of the height really, so you can have a, a, a heights of up to thousand meters, or even hundred meters. Hundred, even hundred meters is three hundred. Uh, more than uh, it's about three hundred sixty, nearly four, nearly three hundred ninety uh, feet. So that's that's tall. 
Um, and, uh, and, and a Kaplan turbine is a high flow, high flow rate, low head. So you can, 10 meters is enough to generate something. Uh, so ge generate electricity. And, and that's what you call an uh, Osperger or a bulb turbine as well. So they, these are, again, um, re reaction tur turbines rather than impulse turbines. And, and then you have the Francis turbines where you have a decent height as well as a really good uh, flow rate. So, uh, so if you if you go to the one gigawatt range, you you will be using mostly uh, Francis turbines. Uh, um, and uh, if you are operating at uh, say ten megawatt range or twenty megawatt range, you can be using Either of the three, basically, Felton, Francis, and Kaplan. Yeah, somebody asked a question. Uh, to uh, the question was, uh, ooh, I can't use the mouse properly. Okay, right. Anyway, okay. Uh, I don't know whether you can see this question. Is the, is the flow rate control uh, the using? Uh, Things like sluice, sluice gates for these applications. Um, yes and no. I will explain how it happens. Usually, uh, sluice gates are used uh, to regulate the uh, regulate the water capacity in a reservoir. Okay, uh, but uh, when you have uh, a turbine. Uh, the turbine uh, is uh, uh, water to the turbine. Water to the turbine comes through a what you call a penstock. Penstock is is a pipe that is a pipe that is carrying the water. Pipe that is carrying the water to the turbine. Okay, the, so the penstock penstock is located uh, in the reservoir. I mean at uh, at the um, at the reservoir barrier okay so the uh, a sluice gate is used to uh, control the water level of the reservoir but uh, usually not uh, to control the water that is coming into the turbine so the water level the water that is coming into the turbine is uh, <clears throat> is controlled by a gate or a valve basically it's a valve uh, uh, that is located uh, at the near the turbine or a valve located at the start of the of the penstock. Penstock is the tube that is carrying the water to the turbine itself. Okay. So usually sluice gates are used uh, to control the uh, water level of the reservoir, not to, not to uh, control the water that is coming into the uh, turbine. So uh, you have uh, gate valves for the turbine. So these valves must be closed very, very slowly. Otherwise you will have uh, what you call a, um, pressure, pressure surges, pressure, pressure rises, uh, which can damage the whole system. Um, if, you, if you do, um, Design of fluid systems module uh, next year. Uh, you, you will learn how these will uh, how, how these pressure pulses, pressure impulses uh, generate and, and can damage. And uh, these pressure impulses can uh, be very large if you close the valves very quickly. So you need to close the valves very slowly in these ones. So um, the problem is. Um, the response time uh, of uh, hydropower stations is not very quick. They are okay, they are, they are quick enough, but that not very quick. So uh, if you are going to meet the peak demand of uh, electricity, uh, hydropower is, is not the solution. Uh, if, if you want to meet the peak demand, you need something like a gas turbine or um, a, 
or a generator powered by uh, uh, an, a large engine, large marine marine engine. Um, so a company, so, so there are companies who, who make really large engines, uh, people like Watsila and uh, Cummins, um, they, they make really large uh, diesel engines. So those diesel engines run uh, generators and then you ge uh, generate electricity. So that's that's something else. That's that's nothing to do with uh, hydropower anyway. Okay. And then uh, there is something uh, called uh, an uh, Archimedes screw. So um, Archimedes screw is also, um, uh, it, it's in a way a um, high flow device. So, um, but uh, uh, you have a very uh, small head. So you can run, arch run an Archimedes screw from one meter to 10 meter head. So, uh, and uh, <coughs> These are high efficiency across a wide flow variation and uh, efficiency of up to about 87%. Uh, and water to wire efficiency is what water to wire efficiency is uh, the potential energy available potential in the, the available electricity at the end divided by the available potential energy is the water to wire efficiency. So <clears throat> this is uh, this this uh, an Archimedes screw is, is a is technically a simple de simpler device. So uh, no need for expensive fine screening, fission, debris can pass through, um, and robust simple machinery, low maintenance. So that's that's where the turbine is. This is the Archimedes screw. So that's your head generated. That's the water coming into the screw. Uh, So uh, the largest um, hydropower plants, um, one, there, there's one called the Three Gorges in China, 18,200 uh, power output, uh, meg megawatt power out output, so that is 18 gigawatt power output. So it is actually 22, 22 gigawatts now. And uh, there's one in um, uh, Brazil, uh, across River Parana, which is, four, which is four, 14 uh, gigawatt. And there's one in Venezuela, um, which has 10 gigawatt power, power station. Venezuela is a, is a, is a, is a I don't know. It's, it's a place where they have all the energy. Uh, they are blessed with all the energy and uh, due to bad management, the people are not getting the benefits of it, um, I, I guess. Uh, they have oil as well as rich hydropower. Some countries, they don't have either oil or any other energy sources. And there's another one in Brazil um, across river uh, uh, Tocantins, uh, which is about seven gigawatts. And uh, the US's largest one is across the Columbia River, which is, uh, sorry, uh, which is uh, six gigawatts. Mind you, this uh, these 18 gigawatt or 14 gigawatts are not not a single turbine. So you have a row of uh, series of turbines uh, uh, operating. Okay. So we uh, will um, look at the Three Gorges Dam. Uh, it start they started construction in 1994, completed in May 2006. Cost 39 billion US dollars. Cost recovery uh, was supposed to be in 10 years when generated uh, 1,000 terawatt hours. Uh, it's a 300 uh, foot or, or, or what you call a 100 uh, meter tall one. So <laughs> it is high, high, high capacity, medium height, um, uh, high capacity, medium height uh, installation. So capacity is 22 gigawatt, uh, uh, gigawatts, and uh, it has uh, 30 to 700 megawatt uh, Francis turbines and 250 megawatt Francis turbines. Okay. 
uh, and uh, the area is 1,000 uh, square kilometers. Uh, capacity factor is uh, 0.45. So you see, the capacity factor is 0.45. So that means it's it's running high at some point and running low at some point. Um, so um, it doesn't run uh, at 22.5 uh, gigawatts at all the time. So, um, uh, estimate uh, peak flow rate through each of the 700 megawatt turbines and the total annual electricity generator generation. So, uh, the height is 100, capacity is 22.5, uh, area is 1000, capacity factor is 0.45. So, how do we do this? So um, P or the power is uh, eta rho Q G H. Um, so can you do a quick hand calc and text post post the answer for me, please? Take a couple of minutes and do that if you don't mind. Thank you. Answers, text, text me, please. Okay, Q is uh, 700 times uh, 10 to the power 6 um, divided by that. So Q is 991 meter cube per second. Uh, <clears throat> and the electricity generation is that uh, 88.7 terawatt hours. So yeah. Itaipuram, uh, so it is built across the uh, Parana River between Brazil and Paraguay. Uh, so they started constructing it in 1975, last two generations in 2006 7. 20 generations, generators, uh, 10 um, generators at uh, 50 hertz, 10 at 60 hertz, 700 megawatt each. Um, area is 1,350 square kilometers, uh, and uh, the Q or the flow rate is uh, 14,000 uh, meter cube per second. So electricity generation is 91 terawatt hour per year. So if we were to estimate head and capacity factor, if generation efficiency is 80. 86 percent so power, power uh, is uh, 20 times 714,000 megawatts and pe is eta pro qgh so the h is 118 meters capacity factor is 91 times 10 to the power 12 divided by 14,000 plus 10 to the power 6 times 24 times 365 this 24 is 24 hours 365 days and capacity factor is 0 0.74, which is high actually, practically. A capacity factor of 0 0.74 is good, very good. This is um, another uh, way of generating power. So um, these ones we were talking about, Itaipu and uh, Three Gorges. So they are big dams and uh, 
you generate a quite a nice head and then run that uh, through a turbine. Then mm. you can have something um, else uh, where you can run off, run a turbine off a river. So in here, you, you again has a, has a dam, but through the dam, there is a gate. Yeah. Um, Raise us question, sluice gate, you can have a sluice gate here. Um, you, ha you have a beer here. And, and then you have the upper level water. So, so the head difference is that minus that. Yeah. So the head difference is that minus that, even though your turbine is submerged. So don't uh, think that your turbine head, the, the, the head, gen head difference is that minus that. So that's not the head difference. The head difference is actually that because the pressure here is that pressure, pressure here. And uh, upstream pressure is, is that diff that that head. okay. So these are for um, low head, large flow rate, uh, 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 la large flow rate uh, applications normally. Uh, and uh, well, this, the power supply can be less reliable because the uh, water levels can change. So uh, the weir can uh, divert the water as well uh, a little bit. Um, so this is a typical um, arrangement here. Okay. So what you call the Laufenberg uh, is a um, is a, is a run of the river uh, uh, place. So here. You, you have the uh, turbines uh, here. You you have the water going over the uh, weir. Still, uh, it it has a 79% efficiency with a capacity factor of 0 0.48, 0 0.68. So, if you were to uh, cal calculate the estimated annual output, uh, P power is. Um, Eta rho Q G H. Uh, so uh, you said uh, uh, eta is 0 0.79, uh, rho is 1000, Q is 1355, 9.81 is G, and H is 10.1, so that is 606 megawatt. Electricity generated is Bt to the time uh, Cf capacity factor, so that 631 uh, gigawatt hours. Okay. And uh, the on the other side of the scale now, we were talking about huge uh, installation. On the other side of the scale, we have what you call uh, small uh, scale and micro uh, hydro uh, hydro uh, micro hydro uh, stations. So small scale is uh, less than 10 megawatt. Micro is about uh, less than 100 kilowatt. Uh, yeah. Small. But uh, <coughs> if you if you talk about a small scale uh, generation in China, it would be about less than fifty megawatts. So, uh, yeah. so in in certain places, a fifty megawatt is a is a mid medium size uh, power generation scheme. Um, the um, Cost uh, per cost per kilowatt hour uh, of these ones uh, is higher than a large scale uh, installation because uh, it has low economies of scale um, because you have a very small uh, amount of water, but uh, you have to have a high installation cost compared to what you are going to generate. But when you don't have anything, you go for we go for it, okay. So uh, it doesn't. It, it it's um, really you. You need to weigh the situation there. So uh, it's better to have hydropower than have nothing. And then uh, you have uh, the other arrangement called uh, what is called a pumped storage. Now the the use of a pumped storage is. Um, 
you might laugh at it or you pump for pump, pump water um, upstream and then run a turbine why do you why do you really want to do that why, why do you spend energy pumping water upstream what you why you do that is actually you you pump uh, water uh, to have uh, <coughs> to fill the reservoir so that you can use it uh, during uh, D d d during uh, the times when you don't have water okay so so you pump and store water so that uh, you can meet the demand you can so that you then you can make the make the demand exactly look yeah it is uh, it is energy storage for peak times yes so you are trying to meet the demand Petrol powered wind turbines. <laughs> uh, is, is, uh, are you serious? <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Good, good one, though. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right. Uh, so, so um, but uh, the. Here, uh, what you do is you you use you pump the water um, upstream uh, to uh, you, using hydropower itself. So you are not using any petrol or anything like that. You just uh, use uh, some of uh, use a pump uh, to uh, pump the water upstream, so that you you will be using uh, that uh, in high demand. Um, and um, there is another <clears throat> so. The, there, there is another way of doing this. Uh, uh, there are pumps called uh, something like uh, uh, um, ram pump, hydraulic ram pumps. There, there is a pump called hydraulic ram pump. Uh, hyd a hydraulic ram pump can be used for uh, used to uh, elevate water. If you have a high high flow, uh, high Q, uh, high high flow, low head. Um, source, you can use that high flow low head source to um, take water to a much higher elevation. So uh, at the end, you will have a high head low flow uh, source. So uh, a hydraulic ramp pump can be used for this one. <laughs> and uh, Denawig uh, is a uh, is a, is a, an example. Uh, so it has six generator motors with uh, reversible Francis turbines. So one six eighty megawatt uh, power output can provide power for five hours, seventy four to seventy five percent overall efficiency. And uh, originally it stores excess power at low demand, and uh, volume of water used uh, six point seven times to e to the seven, six times ten to the power six meter cube. So mean head is 500 meters. 500 meters is quite tall, really. So um, it can run at 82% efficiency after a six hour refill. So Q is V over T. So that's your Q. P, P is power is uh, uh, rho QGH. Uh, eight, 1825.6 megawatts and efficiency is PE over P one uh, so that is 93 percent efficient and the electricity generated is P times P which is uh, and so the power is uh, 253.6 uh, megawatts per pump so electricity uh, is uh, 309 0.2 megawatts per pump because we you pump back yes um there are environmental impacts um, uh, of uh, reservoirs or, or hydropower uh, <laughs> i think i can show you something uh,
<laughs> good, good one, Ben. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you need to cook them before that. So Ben says, uh, sell dead fish to food banks, improve cost efficiency. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> right. Uh, uh, now I was going to show you something. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly show, show this to you. Um, right. Uh, uh, this is uh, well. This is uh, something that I was fascinated when I was a kid. Um, when when we were schooling, we went to see the construction of this place. This is uh, this uh, this is the Victoria uh, Dam in Sri Lanka. So it's 122 meters tall, uh, 520 meters long. It is across the Mohavali River in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is a country where there, there's there's a nice food, a nice rainfall. So um, so it has 100, 122 meters tall means it's tall, and it it's a it's but it's a 200 something meg, megawatt power station uh, actually, um, and uh, you can drive over the over this dam. So it it's a beautiful scene over there, and. Uh, this was a um, the this was made by um, Balfour BT Nato, which is a which is a British company uh, on British uh, aid, rather rather a loan from British government in the 1980s. Um, so yeah, when uh, when we talk about power stations, uh, this is something that comes into my mind first. It's a beautiful place. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> sorry. So uh, environmental impacts can be flooding upstream. So you 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 saw the pictures of the of the dam that I just showed you. So it actually uh, drowned one um, one um, town called Kotmele. So, um, because of this Victoria Dam, uh, so uh, migratory fish routes can be blocked. So you know, uh, for example, salmon uh, fish they 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 swim upstream during their uh, when, during their reproduction season. So uh, you need to do something about it. Um, and fish can obviously fish can get uh, crushed. Through the turbines can get can cut ship fish can cut uh, by the turbines and uh, there can be uh, local effects like snails and uh, etc and uh, plastic debris can um, collect and uh, biomass can decom uh, biomass decomposition in water there's there's a lot of silt uh, that can be uh, collected and downstream can be flooded at some point, uh, and um, downstream can starve. So you can have starvation downstream uh, with uh, uh, as well nutrients as well as water. Uh, the because there is there isn't enough flow of water because of large reservoirs, they, you, the water can lack oxygen. So water has to flow to collect um, oxygenate. Uh, sorry. The water has to flow to oxygenate, or you, you, the surface area of the water that is the, in contact with air should be maximized uh, for the water to oxygenate. And uh, standing water can increase disease rates. So uh, it still is a reservoir, large reservoir. Uh, disease rates can be low. Oops. Then uh, you have what you call the fish passes. Uh, so that, that's uh, you can have a ladder scheme uh, where where fish can pass or, or over the jumping fish can um, pass over upstream. Funny arrangement. Isn't it? Anyway, uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so advantages are, of water power uh, or hydropower are no emissions. Really, really green. Relatively uh, consistent output, uh, low operating and maintenance costs, um, long lifespan. So you make it 
you build them for to last more than 100 years. Pumped storage can help integration of renewables uh, and transport links can be made uh, as well. So for example, the, I, I, I showed you the road uh, about the dam of Victoria uh, Falls. Uh, that's road linkage can provide uh, flood protection as well because uh, you, when you have a dam, you can you can have regulated control of water, regulated flow of water for downstream. Um, so, and when you have a large dam, you can, uh, during a uh, high rainy season, you can, uh, you, you can control uh, floods downstream. Uh, and you can obviously you can use uh, reservoirs for rec recreational use for for surfing etc <clears throat> so um, again uh, disadvantages can be you can have environmental Im impacts risk of flooding upstream uh, high upfront investment they are very expensive uh, uh, and uh, pumped storage results in a net loss of electrical energy and uh, se sedimentation can reduce the capacity as well. And also, which we don't want to talk about, are disasters. Okay, Ben, are you writing something? Ben Caps? Okay. Um, in uh, 1889, uh, South Fork Dam, uh, it was neglected and it, it uh, came down and 2,200 were killed. In 1928, uh, St. Francis uh, Dam uh, killed 450. That is because of uh, unsuitable geology. I mean, the thing is, uh, you, you build a dam, so you build a dam across uh, a, a valley, basically. So a valley is made of two uh, hills. So if the soil of the hill is not strong enough, uh, so when you build the dam, the hills can give way. So if so soil is not not good enough, so uh, so you, you you have to go do a proper proper geol geological study before you do this. And and when you when you collect water. You know, you know that some of the earth uh, is soluble, therefore it can weaken uh, the uh, structure. And in 1975, uh, Shimantan Dam uh, in uh, and uh, it was unprecedented rainfall due to unprecedented rainfall. Uh, it gave way, and 85,000 people killed. Well. Uh, don't wish, or I, I, I don't think this will happen anyway. So what happens if three go just fail? I don't think it will fail, don't worry. Um, and then um, there is uh, what you call the red to dead project. So uh, so this is uh, taking water from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea, because the water level of the Dead Sea is going down. Therefore, uh, they are planning in, in, in the project, they uh, put a, a pipeline from the uh, Red Sea to the Dead Sea so that they could uh, take water there. Um, so here uh, you, you have the Red Sea, and then uh, that, then, then uh, you pump water uh, over the hills, and then they, uh, they take that to a desalination plant, and uh, then you have Take, you take the fresh water and you uh, send the brine uh, through a hydroelectric plant to the Dead Sea. So, uh, then uh, there, there is also a tunnel made at sea level uh, and there's an overground pipe, uh, pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, without this, um, the uh, volume uh, of volume rate of the day as well at a rate of 0.74 kilometer cube per year uh, the dead sea uh, shrinks so there's a quick uh, calculation again uh, so <coughs> 
So the, with this uh, water flow, we we are going. We can uh, generate uh, electricity as well. So the so the so electricity is actually a byproduct. So you have the Red Sea, which is at a higher elevation than the Dead Sea, and then you have a pipe and a, and a hydroelectric power station. Therefore, you make you make electricity while transporting water from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea. Yes. So the power that can be generated is 61 megawatts, not that large, but it's it's good. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, you can uh, generate twice as much uh, here. And uh, it's a it's sorry run of a water project so i think uh, we uh, we stop here um, i'm happy that i i ran through the whole um, lecture slides today and i can post this uh, online <coughs> for the benefit of the students who didn't come and uh, i am now happy to uh, uh, answer questions if you have any um, no, thank you for coming online anyway it's 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 nice of you nice uh, of you to come here uh, at short notice. Raytha, purely on a cost basis, is it cheaper to have this or a battery storage system, like a like for like energy storage? Um, the advantage of uh, hydroelectricity is uh, you can't have this size of uh, an energy storage using a battery storage system uh, as yet so it's uh, cheaper to have uh, it's still cheaper to have a uh, hydroelectricity well uh, uh, store energy in water than storing energy in a battery at the moment did i answer that answer your question yeah, no, I was, I was just wondering purely on the cost side of things. Um, but yeah, I, I, that probably does make sense. That, yeah, this the sizing of this is a lot. Yeah, just and getting... also this is, uh, um, this is once you have uh, once you have the reservoir, it's purely green. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least ninety nine percent green because you might you might move. Well, uh, I mean, in practical terms, you have. Uh, Sometimes you you, you use um, diesel powered engines to operate sluice gates, etc. So, I mean, the compared to the amount of energy generated, that's clearly negligible. Yeah. Okay. Thank You're you. Welcome. Any any other questions? You can text here or you can ask the questions. Yeah, welcome, Chris. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, Chris. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will. Um, all. I mean, um, I can also run a, a tutorial class uh, um, because it's online. I, I would rather run one or two tutorial classes than um, your timetable slots. So. Uh, Perhaps I will do it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will put some slots in there. Um, then uh, email me if you can't make it. Yeah. So we can we can run the tutorials interactively as well. I mean, if you are happy, we can we, we can video conference as well. You can see me, I know, and I can see you as well if if necessary, and we can share documents, etc. So. This can be really interactive, and uh, I have got the necessary gear gear for this. I have double, double screen at home and uh, docking station, and everything. So I'm equipped to um, cater you online. So interest, Ben. Uh, perhaps I missed it. 
uh, but would have been interested to have seen more on costs on dams in different areas. Okay, uh, right. Uh, Phil is here. Um, yeah, I haven't got it um, readily, but I will. Uh, I'll try to get some uh, sense in here, uh, Ben. Um, yeah, uh, I, I I don't have that uh, information readily. Uh, the the real costs of these dams. Yeah, but uh, um, the main main thing is they are expensive um, because just because of the sheer size of uh, the uh, the dam thing <laughs> because it's a dam okay um any other questions uh... Uh, yes, uh, Ben. Uh, uh, actually, um, I have an answer. Uh, Three Gorges uh, cost um, six point two billion uh, US. Dollar. Well, um, two hundred three billion uh, RMB uh, uh, Chinese yen. A Chinese yen is about ten times. Uh, ten, ten, sorry, ten Chinese yen is about a pound. So that means uh, 20 billion pounds. So that's about, uh, I think that's about 30, 30 billion US dollars. Uh, it, it's about 20 billion pounds for, for the three gorges. Three gorges is uh, 20 billion. Um, there is a okay, Joseph. That that that's 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 good. That's good. Yeah. Um, the uh, the <clears throat> it it depends on the the battery uh, the 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 battery costs uh, are are good, but the Problem with batteries is uh, the um, the number of times you can use a battery is uh, about thousand cycle max, eight hundred to thousand cycle max cycles max. But um, the uh, longevity of uh, hydro hydropower hydropower uh, plants uh, are more, and the efficiency of the uh, battery power, battery storage capacity. Uh, goes down to about um, 60 percent uh, uh, when you use it for the 4,000 times uh, so um, those disadvantage disadvantages are there as well uh, 
and uh, the uh, the the usual generation cost of uh, hydroelectricity is about uh, 20 cent 20 us dollar cents that is about uh, that is about 14 15 pence per kilowatt hour which is which is which is more expensive at, uh, uh, in a way yeah when, when you take the capital cost So, for example, uh, one kilowatt uh, off-grid uh, battery charging system may cost like uh, five to six thousand uh, pounds. So, five kilowatt Pelton will uh, will cost about twenty-five thousand pounds. So that is about five five thousand pounds per kilowatt. So they are at the, so. So they are of the same scale if you if you if you go high in scale. So uh, hydropower is better than battery power. So uh, you can uh, have a good. I, I will I will post this link uh, uh, from the Center for Alternative uh, Technology. Uh, I will I will post this one on Blackboard now actually. So, learning materials. Um, lecture eight. <coughs> <coughs> and Okay, you guys can check this one up. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. So I guess that's it. Yes. Uh, yes, Ben. Uh, I will. Uh, I will. Uh, I will inform you beforehand, and uh, I will have a lecture online, and I will uh, arrange some tutorial classes as well. Don't worry. Uh, uh, we will. Uh, I will not um, abandon you due to coronavirus. <laughs> okay. Nice to have you online, um, guys. Um, uh, have a good. Uh, have a good, good evening. Bye now. Any any more questions? Last minute ones. No. Thank you.